Okay. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Kevin and uh, also known as Kazmodes on the forums. I just Someone asked me in a post to uh, show them how I um, created this, uh, the carvings for this background. Um, you can see it's kind of layered like a, a rock wall would be that you'd find a slate wall. So um, in a nutshell, basically what I did was I took boards like this and stacked them um, one on top of the other and carved them before each one one at a time. Then I'd glue it and stack it with using Gorilla Glue and um, plastic pegs. So the first thing I would do is, uh, you can see one, like an example, a sample that I carved. If I wanted to carve the next layer up, I would just lay the board on like that, use a Sharpie, and draw my lines to get my shape. So, um, but for the example, I'm not going to use this one. Um, I'm going to just start carving this into a shape. Um, and let's uh, just draw a random, as if the shape was uh, um, Can you see what I'm doing down here? Okay. So I'm just going to carve the, the board. And, the, and I'm just going to chop it off right here so that, chop it off right here so that uh, um, one easy way with board, you can just pop it like that and it just breaks. So this, and then with a foam board, it's really easy to work with. One thing I'd recommend is wearing a glove. Uh, this is um, like a fillet glove, filleting glove. Um, a lot of butchers wear them and things like that for obvious reasons. It's to protect your hand when carving. And speaking from experience, I uh, spent Christmas Eve uh, the year before last in the operating room uh, getting stitches uh, because um, I thought I could work the knife in one little slip and I had sliced my thumb and it cost me three stitches. So uh, let me show you how I carve this. And, you know, first thing, I just get my general shape. You don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. You can just, it doesn't need to be perfect because you're going to carve most of it away anyway. And then I just break it off. I don't really want real even edges. Um, the next step is, let's say my layers, I want to do my, my outermost layer furthest up. I want to be somewhere like here. Just do some random stuff and then I'll carve back to there. Um, and I would just, all I would do is just cut like this and flip it up until I got to where I want to be. I don't really care about the shape right now. And you can do varying thicknesses. I just did a little bit like a quarter inch at a time. Like that. Right now I'm just trying to get some mass out of here so I can get to the more detailed stuff later. These butcher knives work really well. Um, you can get all kinds of shapes from them. You just basically just carve like that. Here's an, because I'm right-handed, I have to go the opposite way to get that kind of thing. I don't re like really curved edges and you know that much, but so that's the first layer. And then let's say that I wanted to to go a similar layer. I could just go about a quarter inch down and work my way in. And I like that little dent there so I can cut that. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, Rock.
rocks don't break in uniform ways in the, out in uh, nature. Um, it all depends on, uh, see it just slipped right there and got my thumb. Um, but since I'm wearing my glove, no harm done. I don't know if I can carve, carve a little further down. I can actually just maybe go one more. And then if I want to break it off, I can just break that off like that. Go back to this side. Presumably this is going to be up against the glass over here. Break, cut that off like that. I don't like the, the whole idea is to get rid of straight lines too. Straight lines a lot of times don't look really natural. And I'll show you a trick in a minute. Sometimes you can just create some neat looking. So like right here, as you can, I don't know, can you swing over here and look? See how I've created these cracks? These cracks going up like that? So wherever you can find a swing back here, you can, we can use that as a, as a crack. If you, as you build the layers, what you can do is just keep flicking it like this. Maybe create a, like a fissure in the wall. I'll grab a, these wooden, uh, these wooden picks um, that you use for kebabs and things like that. They make really, you know, I didn't do this until I actually had several layers, but what you can do is just kind of just use that to carve like a, a crack. Um, another thing is you can make impressions of, up here on the wall. I made different fossils. You can see this is a crinoid here. Um, I have different shells and coral that I've impressed. Um, down here, there's a layer that looks like model. I'll show you how I created that. Um, so, just, um, basically, you can just, here's a piece of coral. You can just dig it in there. And it creates a nice pattern. You can carry that forward all, all the way across. And it looks like a fossil layer. Like that. I've got some other stuff that I, uh, I use. Uh, one of my favorite things was a, just a spring. I played around with all kinds of different stuff. The spring is nice because you can bend it to get the, a crinoid. Like if I want to go like that, you can bend it to get that shape. And press that in. See now you got a crinoid, and you can actually bend it this way, and then bend it this way. And now it now it looks like a branching crinoid. See that? Um, here's another type of coral that I had, and I can just press that down. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, another thing I did is that really mottled layer right here. You could just take a brush like this and just dimple it by pounding it, and you can get make it not look so smooth. Does that look nice? Um, and 
ultimately, um, excuse me one second, grab no. Then I would just do another one. And I draw the layer down there to get my outermost thing, cut it. Then I could drill holes in this and then poke these sticks in. Then I would use Gorilla Glue between the layer and also in the holes where these uh, plastic sticks. These are just popsicle things that my wife found at uh, Michael's. Um, they were cheap on sale around Halloween. They had black and orange ones. It doesn't matter. It's all going to get covered up. So who cares what color it is? Um, and then um, just I would put some weight on them and clamp them down. And I did one layer at a time. So it took quite a while to do uh, to get to this point. This is two two sections. It's going to go in a 75 gallon. I have another section back there, which you can go to the threads on my forum to see more information on those. Um, I've got dry lock, and the next step in this is to use cement and pigment and mix it with dry lock, and then paint it, and all the details should show up, because dry lock tends to, to let you see a lot of that detail. Some of it might not, and I don't really care that much. Eventually in the fish tank it's going to get covered with algae probably anyway, so um, at least it'll look cool for a while. Uh, the main thing is I wanted it to look like a real walk, rock wall in there. Um, and this thing I created a, I created a um, removal piece and behind here is a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a, um, this pipe has a, um, it's basically a, where my filtration intake for my filter is. I have a um, canister filter I'm going to run through here and a, the bar is going to go across the top. So that's it. That's how I did it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from this. Most importantly, make sure you get one of these guns, these gloves. <laughs> um, it's probably saved my finger a nice cut. I have a scar right there from two years ago. Thank you very much.